Hello everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Dr. Carmen Bryant, your host of Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. To all the new subscribers, thank you so much for joining me on your venture of adventure or venture of learning and being educated or learning to come out of or learning to build your strength in these horrible situations that we've gotten ourselves into, which is narcissist abuse in relationships. Today I wanted to come on and I wanted to talk about because someone mentioned about having to um, separate yourself or remove yourself or cut off toxic family members. And when I say toxic family members on this channel, I'm referring to those that are narcissists. Do know, you know, most of the time when we're talking, we're talking about um, intimate relationships. So husbands and wives and wives and wives, husbands and husbands and boyfriend and girlfriends. And so we're, we're usually focused a lot on romantic relationships or parents, parental figures. You know, but with narcissism, you know, the uh, you're dealing with mothers and fathers, you're dealing with sisters and brothers, you know, so siblings, cousins, you know, anyone that's close, uncles and aunts, best friends, BFFs, you know, co-workers, anybody that's close enough to you to affect you emotionally. You know, if you don't care about the individual, it doesn't matter what they do, unless they do something illegal or try to sabotage you. Nine times out of ten, if you're not emotionally close to an individual, they don't have the same effect as an individual that's close to your heart or close to your emotions, especially when you're dealing with family. And so if you think about it for just a minute, you know, a narcissist, and I know some of you like, really, you know, a narcissist actually is someone's child. I know. Let's think about that for a minute. A narcissist is actually somebody's child. So that means that they have a parent or parents or someone that has raised them. Uh, I know you guys are like, they were actually born to someone? Yeah, <laughs> they were. I think I made my own self laugh on that one. But yes, they do have parents. They have husbands and wives, as you know. They have children, um, nieces and nephews, uncles and aunts, cousins, best friends. Well, let's say friends, co-workers. And so, yes, yeah, so a narcissist has family members. And just imagine if you were involved romantically with a narcissist, imagine how they harass family sisters and brothers intimate family members uh, uh mothers and fathers imagine if you, what you're going through imagine what the family members are going through and some family members were happy to get rid of them and give them to you and you gladly accepted them and in their mind they're thinking you have no idea what you got on your hands some family won't even recognize that, that individual has problem they won't even validate you know what is happening and there are some family members that will say i know exactly what you're dealing with and i've watched it happen in several other relationships and that's what happens at home and so this comes a time in which uh i think i had a subscriber ask you know having to separate yourself from toxic relationship and i and i uh posted it on one of my facebook pages let's stop telling people well you know that is your mom well you know that is your dad well you know you guys are family well if family uh, people that are closest to you are not supposed to purposely uh, antagonize you, create chaos, bruise you, wound you, emotionally uh, tear you apart. You know, uh, this is one of those moments where you have to make a decision. And that decision, you know, where they say uh, uh, blood is thicker than water, but love doesn't hurt. You know, yeah, you know, love, separation, having to, to leave, or but love is not painful meaning that love is not emotionally destructive there is no such thing as as love being emotionally destructive people get confused uh hopefully you were able to watch um my video yesterday with codependency caretaker versus caregiving and and enablers you know but you confuse love with um you know uh, caretaking you know go watch that video uh you confuse love love is not painful love is not you know love is not harsh love is not uh um uh, uh selfish you know love is mutual you're supposed to mutually love someone and care for them you know it's not an emotional thing it's a respect it is a action word and so for those of you that have been asking especially those that have aging parents that are narcissists or parents that have dementia you know some of you feel really guilty having to separate yourself. Only you know how much you can tolerate. Only you know how much you have been wounded because a lot of times you even go to visit your family member in the nursing homes and they're just violent or they're hateful or the things they make you feel obligated. They make you feel, you know, you, you are obligated to take care of me. I'm your mother how, or father. You know, how dare you leave me in here? Look at, and you know, the smear campaign starts. And so I, I picked these two sites because I wanted to talk about, you know, letting go of toxic people, even if it's, even if it's a family 
family member and we're referring to toxic individual being the narcissist and so you can find this on pragmatic parent uh let's see is the pragmat pragmaticparent.com letting go of toxic people and this article is written by dun, 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 let me find it uh let's see here um who's this written by let me see who's written by give me a second want to make sure we give proper credit to the author and okay, now you guys hear me scrolling right Okay, give me a minute. Let me make sure I, I want to make sure I give proper credit. Let's cite our work. Okay. Oh my gosh. There's more responses to this article than article. Okay. Let's see. Who was this written by? Um, it doesn't say. Okay. Well, you guys go and look under the pragmatic parent.com letting go of toxic people so let's jump into it so here the article says toxic relationships in the case of uh, narcissist relationships narcissistic relationship or narcissist relationships with a narcissist can be between friends boyfriends and girlfriends partners or family members a toxic person being the narcissist can be mother or father sibling colleague most often it's usually a person who's closest to you that is harming you the most Removing yourself from a toxic relationship is hard, so a lot of you are struggling with it because family is supposed to be family. There are no instructions on walking away and letting go of a toxic person, but it's a worthy process to pursue your own happiness and fixing the internal damage which emotional abuse inflicts. So emotional abuse is not just inflicted on a child or inflicted on a romantic relationship. You can be, uh, as you know, emotionally damaged by family, siblings, close friends some of you guys have best friends where you have no boundaries and you let them do anything because you love them and you don't want to break up with your own friends and so um it says here that toxic family members can take you on an emotional roller coaster ride on a regular basis leaving you with a range of conflicting feelings confusion and obligation to the relationship pain guilt you know so they make you feel guilty uh anger grief and taking the steps to let go of family is incredibly hard, guilt riddling, and takes tremendous amount of courage. And here it says, uh, you know, a family member will take advantage of the fact that you're family. A, a bond that is supposed to be enduring, loving, and respectful. To manipulate and hurt you because uh, they know you will find it very hard to remove yourself because you are family. That's why I love, uh, when I went to visit in Hawaii, I love the Samoan and Hawaiian culture because they're all about family. You fight one, you fighting everybody. You know, but once they integrate you into family and over there, they call you cousins, cousin. Um, but, you know, to integrate you into their family, you become a part of their family. So no one's going to mess with you either. And and it you, makes you feel safe, but it makes you feel family. You know, everything is family. Um, and so family members will make you feel family, meaning that it doesn't matter what goes on within our family. We're still family. And you, we're supposed to stick it out as a family. OK, but nobody said that family is supposed to abuse family. So I'm getting abused by family. I might as rather go and leave the family and get abused by strangers. It's less, it's less painful. Well, it's painful, but to be abused by a stranger versus being abused by a family member, you know, what am I, you know, it's like having a, what's the purpose of having a friend if, if you know, or if, if you're that type of friend, what's the purpose of having an enemy? You're just like an enemy, you know, so I don't feel safe within the family because now I feel guilty for even making a decision that I may need to leave. And what do most most people say that's your mom though that's your dad you know they're not gonna be around long well, that's your sister y'all family you need to get it together you can uh, you can uh, apologize and make amends as much as you want to but a narcissist is a narcissist and they're not gonna change they are chaotic people that have chaos within them and the chaos that's within them they create a chaotic environment and they have no problem harassing you abusing you or anybody else that's in their path especially family that you're close with so and, and here it says that uh, time and time again, you'll find yourself trying to understand and rationalize their behavior and then forgiving their action because guess what? It's your family. And so in society where it, feel, where it feels that no matter what circumstances, family is an unspoken bond that shall never be broken. When the toxic person in your life is a part of a circular family around you, this makes dealing with their abuse infinity more complicated and painful. So the confusion situation is trying to cope with not only the lack of love and pain you're afflicted with, but the lack of positive relationship with someone who is your own blood. You know, so 
Take a deep look at the relationships closest to you and know how this person makes you feel and how they treat you. If your brother or sister, cousin, best friend, mom or dad makes you feel like crap, you know, makes you feel unworthy, makes you feel hopeless, you're always depressed when you get around them. You know, some people like we're going to the family reunion and you get anxiety just thinking about going to the family reunion because you know Uncle Bobo gonna act up or you know uh, Auntie, Auntie so-and-so, uh, you know, Snicker, Snickerville, you know, or you know mom's gonna act a fool, you know she's, or dad is dramatic, mom's dramatic you know she's a narcissist she always wants everybody's attention she'll throw herself down the steps so dad you know dad gonna get drunk and when he get drunk you know he's gonna say whatever he say and he might be a narcissist he gonna talk about you he gonna dog you out we're family so we should be able to say whatever and say some personal things you know in their mind when you talk to them about personal situation about your relationship about your kids about yourself you know they feel that they have the right to expose all your information to family and this may have been a personal conversation between you and mom or you and dad or you and sibling that they feel is necessary for the whole family to know all your business not only that you know that narcissist within the family brother sister mom dad whatever feels like they need to come to a family consensus to make a decision about your life, your family, and we, and they always use, well, we, uh, you know, made a decision what we were thinking was, well, you know, when we talk, well, what do we have to do with my life? What do, what do we have to do with my family? You see what I mean? They have no boundaries whatsoever, and they interject themselves in your in your family. God forbid if they have to come live with you and they're a narcissist, they take over your domain, they take over your relationship, they take over your house, they take over everything. This is how I did it, and this is how you should do it. And 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 they literally harass you, follow you around and harass you. And so and and really they bully you too. You know, they bully you. Uh, well, I'm your mother, well, I'm your father, and I have the right to say that, you know, because I'm the parent, I'm the matriarch, I'm the patriarch, I'm the I'm the oldest brother brother I'm the youngest sister you know or the 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 I'm the middle child or you know they put themselves in a position where they have the authority to tell you how to live your life or to say what they want to say even if it's embarrassing humiliating and hurtful you know but we're family so we're able to do that uh let's see uh let's scroll down some so toxic people are not fixable so don't try a lot of you guys want to do family interventions. A lot of you guys want to have conversations like talking to a wall. Just bang your head on the wall. Because no matter what you say or no matter how many times you bring up the behavior, you'll notice that it doesn't matter how many times you bring up the problem with the behavior, they'll agree with you and then they go right back to doing what they were doing before. And then you look at them like, didn't we just have this conversation not too long ago? Uh, and then a lot of times, you know, that family member like mother, father, sister, you know, they play the, the innocent role. You know, they, they harass a person so much so much that when they finally go off they look really pitiful or look how they treat me and I can't believe that you know my child would treat me this way or your your uncle would treat me this way and then they that that's when they get them flying monkeys together you know the family member become those flying monkeys you know you shouldn't do dad like that or you shouldn't do mom like that you know that they're getting older or you know that your brother or sister has a has a problem you know and I can't believe that you would be so heartless that you would handle them that way and you're looking like did you see what this fool said and did? You know, do you not see what I see? So it literally drives you crazy and it's confusing because your family now have become flying monkeys. They make you feel guilty over the fact that you see through the smoke and they see nothing. They don't understand what you know or what you see. And then on top of that, if you know that that family member, especially those of you that are on this YouTube channel and you know for a fact that these videos fit family members and you try to explain to family members what that individual is, they'll argue with you that you don't know what you're talking about. Well, no, I don't think that fits him or her or no, you know, I think you're getting too far into it. Everybody now is a narcissist. So, okay, mom and dad now are narcissists. I think you're the one with the problem and you know, and I can't believe you would say that. And so, and they, it's in denial, they play it down and then you're the crazy one. So I know some of you can relate, right? So let's see. Um, toxic individuals are aware of the chaos they create around them and while some toxic people are intentional about the pain they inflict others may be good people who do not know how to exist in a world without forcing you to compromise your happiness and yourself in their affliction remember a narcissist is walking chaos it, you remember Pigpen off of uh, Charlie Brown and remember he had all that dust and flies and had that blanket but that blanket was stink too and and but just dusty and you know a a narcissist is like that internally and so a narcissist is full of chaos and and unhappiness and frustration and so they bring it out and their life is full of chaos so they make everybody 
feel confused they create chaos they create you know division you know an argument and that's the life that they live they're happy because they can see what damage they can do they're constantly you walking on eggshell because they constantly create a anxiety ridden environment that's what they do even family they show up and you're like oh god you know here they go and then you try to separate well i'm gonna go to the store now you don't want to go get a pack of chicken and you come back two days later well what kind of chicken did you go do i had to go to the farm I had to go kill the chicken myself you know hey can you go get a, a, a pack of ice uh we ran out of ice i volunteer and you come back two days later well how much ice did you make i had to go to the glaciers and go get the, go had to go get the ice from the glaciers i had to you know me and the kids had to go get the ice from the glaciers you back at the house now you flew back home well where are you at i'm at the house were you on the other side of the United States or the country? Oh, I have to wait for this special order ice. I'll be back next year. You know, you'll make up any kind of excuse if you really want to get away. But some of you feel obligated to be there. If they cause chaos in the house, it doesn't. I don't care who's in the house. You can get your stuff and leave if you want to. But some of you feel guilty, especially a lot of those that are of a different culture outside of the United States culturally that would be inappropriate that's not how culturally you were raised or you know certain families from like i said certain families from different cultures that is not how you were raised it's very dishonorable and disrespectful to do that um you know and and i can't tell you how to do it in your culture you know but at the same time how do you feel you know how do you feel those that are outside of the united states how do they make you feel you know the big italian families the big uh you know the samoan families the hawaiian families you know the pacific island families you know a lot of the native families a lot of the african-american families and the family unions you know certain cultures is very inappropriate just to get up and leave because that's family tradition you know but do you want to go crazy or do you need to, you know, and, and I try to respect people's culture because you have to make a decision how you want to do it. Now, the average individual, you know, that is in this, you have to make a decision. Do you want to go crazy or do you want to leave that craziness with them? How free do you want to be? How toxic free do you want to be? Okay, let's see. Um, toxic people create drama and live in a world of negativity so let's say narcissistic people create drama and live in a world of negativity and you have to take a hard look and decide for yourself if you can tolerate their behavior for a lifetime because it would never go away uh, or if it's time to make your own well-being a priority your health is important because you physically can get sick from this um, let's see this may this may mean that you distance yourself from this person by spending less time with them not sharing personal information some of you guys share too much personal information about you and you know for a fact as you said it they're like a leaky pail no matter what i tell them everybody's gonna know they're gonna tell everybody even outside of the family they'll tell your personal business let's see so then you have to make a decision whether to disconnect with them temporarily or permanently or distance yourself where you can only only you know tolerate them in in increments from a distance uh coming to realization that your family member is not available to open or open to fully and completely loving you and discovering the fact that you cannot call on them or trust them is one of the life's hardest realizations and most of you guys are having some hard realizations um, you have the right to create a healthy and happy life for yourself uh, without someone else telling you how you're supposed to live narcissists have told you how you're supposed to live how you're supposed to think what you're supposed to do the same as in families <clears throat> this is what you're supposed to do this is how you're supposed to act this is how you're supposed to raise your children um what do you allow you know and be prepared that when you make this decision you know you'll have those toxic family members or those narcissistic family members immediately start a, a smear campaign they'll call up family they'll call up cousins they'll call up aunties they'll call your siblings you know and they will dog they will talk and they will smear your name and talk about you dog you out take truth and mix it in with lies uh let's see let's look where does it say that it says it somewhere here abuse is never tolerable so you guys know that okay let's move to the next so don't waste your time trying to understand the why that's not your responsibility to figure out why um let's see okay let's go to the next one so here on psychcentral.com this blog was written by rachel lee okay don't know who rachel lee is but there's six tips for cutting off contact with narcissistic family members okay 
a mm, let me see which one I want to read to you guys uh, it says here adult children of narcissistic families realize late they'll soon realize that later uh, families realize okay let me go back Sooner or later, adult children of narcissistic families realize that they don't want to put up with abuse anymore. And that's when many decide that the only way they can live a normal, healthy life is to cut themselves off from their family's destructive behaviors. Psychologists refer to this as going no contact. And the name means just that. It means that you no longer speak to, email, or have contact with those members of your family who have hurt you. And you make it clear to them that you prefer it if they don't contact you either. If you seriously are considering going no contact with family or already have, here are a few things to watch out for. Now, keep in mind some of you are concerned about your children who may have, there's parental alienation where they've left you or you are dealing with the fact that they're with that narcissistic family member or have to go to that narcissistic mother or father. Uh, do know just like you have become aware and you have a realization of your parents uh, and toxic, you know, or narcissistic parents that eventually your children will also become uh, aware that something is wrong with their parent. Now, if you're forcing them or if you're harassing them or you're, you're constantly trying to tell them about the other parent you're making a mistake you know you teach them and and you 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 be that that you know that sounding board or you're, you you know that relatively uh, non-argumentative person who brings them information based off of what they say bring correction meaning that you don't harass them and your father your mother's like this and and because that's what the other parent is doing but they're doing it in a more manipulative way where they know how you're going to react so they'll use your reaction so then the child is looking at you react the way that the narcissist says that you were going to react so you have to maintain your cool when you notice things that are not right you make corrections and if they say well mom lets me do this or dad lets me do this then you have to let them know, well, that is in your mother and father's home. But in this house, this is not what we're going to do. Or that would be inappropriate. And you explain to them why that's inappropriate and stuff. Your dad don't know what you're talking about. Your mom don't know what you Your dad and mom's a narcissist. You don't ever say that to a child, okay? Because if they're the absent parent, they long for that absent parent regardless. They don't know that that parent has a mental health or disorder. You know, and so, but eventually they're going to come to the realization, just like many of you guys have, that something is wrong with my parent. Something's wrong with them. You know, and eventually they get tired of them they realize that they're doing me you know they're they're doing them the same way that they're doing you but eventually they get tired of it uh and so here here's some things to consider when going no contact with family members okay don't assume they will respect your decision they won't your family your if your family were capable of respecting your boundaries you wouldn't have to resort to going no contact so however that uh, they don't see it that way they see you as an extension of themselves and the idea that you want something different to them is impossible for them to grasp so remember a narcissist here it says narcissists love trampling over your boundaries they don't they don't there's no such thing as boundaries with you you can be in the bathroom they just walk into the bathroom and have a conversation with you you know you're eating food they take food off of your plate you know without asking you know like that's very disrespectful well i'm the parent you know i'm the parent i can do that no i don't care if you're the parent or not you know that's disrespectful don't do that you know and so it becomes i can't believe because then they play the i can't believe you were treat me this way and i'm your mother or father or sister or brother and we're family i'm like we can be family all you want to just don't put your hand on my plate or don't come in the bathroom while i'm in the bathroom you lock the door why why are you locking the door because I have boundaries that's why um, be prepared for all out smear campaign remember I said that your narcissistic family probably has been managing smear campaigns about you behind your back for years anyway most of you know this but once you go no contact the gloves will come off even if you don't even if you have done nothing wrong you will find yourself being accused of things you never said or did by relatives you thought were on your side this is common tactic used by narcissists to discredit their victim to include your parents your sisters and brothers and family members remember that after years of suffering emotional and psychological abuse at the hands of the narcissistic family should you dare speak out about it they will go into damage control and do everything they can to rewrite the family history and you'll be the um the uh the aggressor you're going to be the one with the problem 
Beware of the flying monkeys. When it becomes apparent that badgering you to contact them and assassinating your character to everyone they can think of hasn't gotten them what they want, they will call in the flying monkeys. Uh, a psychologist uses this term to refer to the people your family recruits to try to guilt you into resuming contact with them. Flying monkeys can be your siblings, friends, family, people around, around them to make you feel bad. And you will find brothers and sisters contacting you, telling you, I can't believe, why would you do that? You know, uh, they're, they're getting older, you know, uh, you know, you're gonna regret it, they die, and you regret it that you didn't have a relationship with them, or you cut relationship, you're gonna regret it. No, I'm not gonna regret it. You know, yeah, you're gonna grieve, you know, but to get away, why would you be tormented? Just at the sake of, you know, my parents or my, my, my siblings are getting older, but so I got to suffer another 20, 30, 40 years, you know, with you and you badgering me. Okay, I'm gonna try to cut that off and I'm take, you know, I'm, I'm gonna think about you from a distance. Hope all go well from a distance. Uh, but this is to give you freedom. But do know that they will recruit family members to harass you and call you and call you. Uh, you know, well, you know, your mom and dad said, or, you know, they can't believe it. You know, they're very hurt, uh, you know, about it. And I was talking to mom or dad or sister, brother, uncle, sister, cousin, whatever, squirrel, who knows. Um, and, um, you know, they're, they're really sad and they can't believe. And, you know, that's just not how they are. And they mean well. And that's not really what they want. They just don't know how to articulate themselves. They're, but they're making excuses. They're the flying monkeys making excuses for the person that's antagonizing you, that's uh, abusing you. And you've been through abuse for years. You stick your ground just like you do in an intimate relationship. Be firm and don't give in if you know that nothing has changed. They've been like this for years. What makes you think they're going to change now? Surround yourself with a good support system. That's why the tribe, you know, find a tribe outside of the YouTube tribe. Find a, uh, join a support group of adult children and narcissistic parents or start one of your own. Let's see what else it says. An emotional support group, a domestic violence support group. Uh, it's essential to have people in your life who understand what you have gone through and support you 100%. Talk to understanding friends about it. Join, okay, so join a support group, uh, start your own. Be careful who you tell. People who haven't been raised by narcissists may see you see your decision as cruel and overreaction because they don't know, they don't understand what it's like to be with a narcissistic parent. You don't want, you don't need to deal with others' judgments of you, particularly if they can't relate personally to what you've experienced. And a lot of you guys go through that. And be kind to yourself. It takes years for you to heal from having spent your life dealing with narcissistic family members. Some of you guys have all your life all your life you've been abused um and you will have days when you hardly think about it and other days when you are so filled with rage you can barely speak but the longer you're away from them the better the chances of you you're finally having a healthy chaos free life don't ever let anyone make you feel guilty about this you know and that's a sad thing because a lot of times you may see people that have close family relationships close family the parents are, are pretty healthy you know every, all parents make mistakes but they're healthy they don't compete with their children they don't abuse their children they support their kids you know and it makes you grieve the fact you wish that your parents could be like that or you have sisters and brothers that go on trips together and family vacations and they can relate to each other and that's not something that you're accustomed to you know it seems like they have fast so you begin to grieve well you create that for your family you create that for other people you know what you've experienced you create that for other people but don't feel guilty when you have to make a decision to cut off uh, you know a narcissistic family member you need to heal and it's not fair that someone will superimpose themselves and feel like it's okay you know like the narcissist does that they can do whatever they want to and you don't say anything about it because we're family members and we're supposed to stick together because blood is thicker than water and I can talk to you whatever I want to I'm not gonna let anybody else do it but I'm gonna talk to you whatever way I want you and I'm gonna make you feel like poop and and I'm gonna harass you and I'm gonna tell you you know they take over your life and tell you how to do something and how you know and then you got children that think they're your that they're your parents or they think that you're they're your husband what they tell you what you're gonna do or how you're gonna do it even if you have to cut off your children and that's one of the hardest things hardest thing that a parent ever has to think of is that you birthed this child and this child developed narcissistic personality disorder and your child abuses you 
your child abuses you, antagonizes you, and you they make you feel guilty for trying to cut off relationships with them. Yet you know they come into your house, you're gonna lose your housing, or you may they're gonna tear up your house. They're gonna do something destructive. They're gonna do something, and the older they get, the worse that they're getting, and you also are being abused by that child. It is best to cut them off before they hurt you because you're the closest to them and they know as a parent, you're not going to put them in jail. Some of you are not going to put them in jail. Some of you are not going to call the police, you know, to make sure that, that you're safe. And they know that you'll keep rescuing them. You keep catching the fool. The fool keeps jumping, you know, and eventually when you just make a decision that I'm not going to catch you anymore, they guilt trip you. They smear your name. My mother and father doesn't even love me. And people put that in their ears. See, look at your mom. Look at your dad. Look at your siblings, you know, but you have the right to cut off anyone that causes torment that causes chaos that is abusing you not just on the outside of close family but within the inside of the intricate or the intimate relationship of family you have the right to cut them off even if they're aging and most people like you don't tell people that you don't but if you've been abused by that individual and when they get when they get older then they use their age they use their sickness you know and they become even more angry and mean Sometimes it's best to let that facility to take care of them. You send them a card, you know, tell them you love them, you know, and, and you do your part and keep your distance so that you can heal and get your sanity. Get your sanity back together. Get balance back in your life. So hopefully this has helped you today. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you have not already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It is Dr. Carmen Bryant, Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. Hit the bell. I upload Tuesday through Friday, pre-recorded videos. Sunday, I come on live between 8 and 9 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, which is West Coast Time in the U.S. And those that um, are on Facebook, I have a professional Facebook page, which is Psychological Health Consultants and Services, but I also have my uh, my book uh, Facebook page, which is Overcoming Narcissist Abuse, has the book cover on there. And so if you have, you make sure you hit the thumbs up, the like button. I do post videos on all three of the channels. I'm also on Instagram under Overcoming Narcissist Abuse, and I'm on Twitter at Dr. Carmen Bryant one and you can join me on Twitter. Sometimes I send out little messages on Twitter um, just to encourage you for the day. I do upload the videos there. So it clicks you right back to YouTube. Um, and so hit the thumbs up on the um, Overcoming Narcissists. This is my book cover on there. So if you haven't ordered my book, order my book. It is, I don't have the book in here, but I do have some bookmarks. Look at this. Um, but Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. That's what the book looks like. So this is, well, this is, this is the, um, bookmark but the cover of the book looks like this is overcoming not overcoming i'm sorry is unmasking the illusion of perfection you can find it on barnes and noble uh if you like reading it in kindle you could order it in kindle uh or if you want a hard copy or a hardback uh you can also get it on and that's on uh amazon i'm sorry amazon has kindle and on barnes and noble you can get the ebook as well but it is unmasking the illusion of perfection it gives you an idea of what narcissist abuse looks like we talk about it all the time but a lot of times people are confused by the behaviors what does it look like and here are stories of real people that have went through narcissist abuse with their children so you'll see how the narcissist abuse the kids how they abuse the people how they manipulate it how they love bomb how they smear campaign even how they got new supply and how the new supply actually um, played a part in there so if you haven't make sure you order the book is under Unmasking the illusion of protect of uh, protection, unmasking the illusion of perfection, which is narcissist abuse, abused by the esteem. So you guys go order the book. Make sure you also I put the links down at the bottom of the YouTube. Those of you that have been asking me about donating to my channel, donating so that I can keep creating and keep developing. You know, there's a link that is right at the bottom of the YouTube um, video that I post. You can go look. There are links to my Cash App and to my PayPal. You're welcome to donate. I truly appreciate you guys asking and inquiring about that. Be patient with me because I am. People have been asking me about podcasts. I'm working on that. I'm also working on classes. So some of you that can't afford coaching, you know, you'll be able to enroll in some of the classes that I'm that I am creating, some training that I'm creating for you guys to help you process through this. I'm going to do whatever I can to assist you guys. Make sure you join me on Sunday where you can ask whatever questions you want to ask. Thank you guys so, so, so much for being here with me. I appreciate you guys. Thank you to all the new subscribers. Make sure you share the videos. Share it 
it with someone. You never know who's going through it. I was surprised at who was going through it and people who are confessing to me what they have been through and that they never knew it had a name. So thank you guys once again. Go be great.